Common controls are one of the most important benefits of the RMF. With common controls, groups of controls can be developed at higher levels in the organization and then allowed to be inherited by the system owner. This allows the system owner to actually implement less controls in their control set. In this module, we'll talk about organizational level common control identification. Hope to join you for more. This is task P5 or prepare five common control identification and takes place at the organizational level. Task P5 states common controls that are available for inheritance by organizational systems are identified, documented, and published as part of this task. Potential inputs include documented security and privacy requirements, existing common control providers and associated security and privacy plans, information security and privacy program plans, organization and system level security and privacy assessment results. So we can see some of the inputs on this task have been conducted in the earlier tasks of the prepare step, but can also be gained from other sources. Expected outputs from this task are a list of common control providers and the common controls that are available for inheritance, as well as security and privacy plans providing a description of the common control implementation. The primary responsibility for this task belongs to the senior information security officer, often referred to as the chief information security officer or the chief security officer, and the senior agency official for privacy. There are many people that support this task, including the mission or business owner, the senior accountable official for risk management or the risk executive function, the chief information officer, the authorizing official, or sometimes referred to as AO, or the authorizing official's designated representative, the common control provider, and the system owner. Common controls are controls that can be inherited by one or more information system. In this example, we see AC1, which is the access control policy and procedure, can be inherited by system A, system B, and system C. This alleviates the task of each of those systems creating their own access control policy and procedure, and the access control policy and procedure can be centralized in the organization, and every system that needs this control can inherit it from that one source, and the source is referred to as the common control provider. This eliminates the need for the system owners, the three different system owners in this case, from creating this control, implementing the control, having the control assessed, and tracking the control. All of these are requirements are conducted by the common control provider through its processing through the RMF. Common controls can include controls from any of the control families from NIST Special Publication 853. Listed on this slide are some examples. Physical environmental protection controls, system boundary and monitoring controls, personal security controls, policies and procedures, acquisition controls, account and identity management controls, audit log and accountability controls, complaint management controls for receiving privacy inquiries from the public. These are all examples of control families that can have inheritable controls. Common control providers are those groups or organizations that will be responsible for maintaining these sets of controls. This includes processing the controls through the RMF, and when that authorization to operate is granted, the controls can then be inherited by system owners. Organizations identify and select the set of common controls and allocate those controls to the organizational entities designated as common control providers. Common controls may differ based upon a variety of factors such as hosting location, system architecture, and the structure of the organization. So it may be possible that different common control providers provide the same controls in different parts of the organization. This is easily illustrated by using an example of physical security controls, gates, guns, and locks, and those kind of things. The physical security organization may be responsible for physical security controls. We'll use the example of guards. 
a guard force in a building in Los Angeles, California, may be managed by the security program there, and the common controls for physical security in that location are managed by that staff. However, the physical security control in Washington, D.C. for those guards may be managed by a different common control provider. So it's easy to see that we can have common controls being managed by different groups but providing the same benefits and protections. When these common controls are developed, it's important to list them and determine who is responsible and which controls can be inherited. The organization-wide list of common controls takes these factors into account. Organizations may establish one or more lists of common controls that can be inherited by information systems. And the list will include not only who is responsible for the control, but in what areas or what systems can inherit those controls. So it would be important for that system owner in Washington, D.C. to ensure they're inheriting those physical security controls from the control provider in Washington, D.C., not the control provider in Los Angeles, California. So the list should identify which systems and location the controls can be inherited. Common controls can also be identified at different levels of the organization, corporate, department, agency level, bureau or subcomponent level, or the individual program level. And we can determine that in different departments, different common control providers may be assigned for similar or same controls that are available in other departments. And this works just like when we're talking about the controls uh, being assigned by a location. In this case, maybe the access control requirements of the human resources department are different than the research and development department. So they would inherit common controls from a higher level in those departments, but not the same sets of controls. Hybrid controls are an example where a control is partially implemented by the common control provider and partially implemented by the system owner. As the requirement may not fully meet a common control, in such cases the control is considered a hybrid control and is noted as such by the organization, including specifying which parts of the common control requirement are provided for inheritance by the common control and which parts are provided at the system level. An example where this could be effective is a common control provider may provide continuity of operation or COOP plans and COOP training for system owners, but the system owner is responsible for implementing the plan and having their people partake in the training. When there are multiple sources of common controls, organizations specify the common control provider. That is, who is providing the controls through what venue, for example, shared services, specific systems, or within a specific type of architecture, and which systems or types of controls can inherit their controls. And this goes back to our location example. So in the Los Angeles office, it would be specified that those physical security controls must be inherited by the local common control provider. So the system owners in Los Angeles could only inherit those controls from the common control provider, which is the physical security department in Los Angeles. And that alleviates any confusion of where these controls would be inherited from. This is an easy example to visualize, and it can be more complex when we talk about more technical controls. Common control listings are communicated to system owners so they're aware of the security and privacy capabilities that are available from the organization through inheritance. Systems owners are not required to assess common controls that are inherited by their systems or document the common control implementation details. That's the responsibility of the common control provider. So in this case, the system owner would list on their control listing a document called the System Control Traceability Matrix, or the SCTM, that the control is being inherited and who it's being inherited from. They don't have to have the control assessed because that's going to be the responsibility of the common control provider as they process those control sets through the RMF. And they don't have to document the details of the control implementation because, again, that's the responsibility of the common control provider. Likewise, the common control providers are not required to have visibility into the system level details of those systems that are inheriting the controls they are providing. In the same instance, the common control provider 
doesn't need to know the details of where their common controls are being implemented in, in what systems, but they need to have a high level understanding of where their controls are being implemented. And the reason this is done is in case there's a change in the status of the common controls, then the common control providers can notify the system owners that are inheriting that control of the change in the common control status. Risk assessment results can be used when identifying common controls to determine, to determine if the controls available for inheritance satisfy the security and privacy requirements for organizational systems and the environments in which those systems operate, including the identification of potential single points of failure. So in these examples, we will be able to do risk assessments on the organization and on the common control sets to determine if there are any risks inherent in inheriting those controls. When the common controls provided by the organization are determined to be insufficient for the information systems inheriting those controls, the system owner can supplement the common control with system-specific or hybrid controls to achieve the required protection for their systems or accept a greater risk with the acknowledgement and approval of the organization. And for this example, we could use something like annual security training. Possible that the organization provides annual security training as a common control. A system owner can inherit that training, therefore eliminating the requirement for the system owner to create the training, have it implemented, have it assessed and maintain documentation. However, there may be one portion of training that the system owner wants to conduct on their own. Maybe they have specific security requirements for documenting the way software code is written. The system owner can take that one piece of the control and implement it locally, have it assessed locally and document it locally, therefore reinforcing the insufficient common control. This way, the system owner is responsible for that portion of the control, but the remainder is provided by the common control provider, and it provides the needed protection for that system. Common control, it's been mentioned earlier that common control providers execute the RMF steps to implement, assess, and monitor the controls designated as common controls. The common control providers may also be system owners when the common controls are resident within an information system. And this bullet point is important. So an information system owner can provide common controls to another information system owner. An example of this is Microsoft's Active Directory may be being used for account management and access control features. These common controls may be inheritable by other system owners but the Microsoft Active Directory system owner is responsible for those controls and serves as a common control provider for them. Organizations select senior officials or executives to serve as authorizing officials for common controls. The senior agency official for privacy is responsible for designing common privacy controls and for documenting them in the organization's privacy program. Authorizing officials are responsible for accepting security and privacy risks results from the use of common controls inherited by organizational systems. So privacy controls follow the same model as other inherited controls. Common control providers, as we've said earlier, are responsible for the care and maintenance of the controls within their common control sets. They're treated like any other system. So the common control providers are responsible for documenting the common controls in security plans or something equivalent, ensuring that common controls are implemented and assessed for effectiveness by qualified assessors and that the assessment findings are documented in assessment reports. They produce a plan of action of milestones or POAM for common controls determined to have an unacceptable deficiency and targeted for remediation. They receive authorization for the common controls from the designated authorizing official or AO and they monitor control effectiveness on an ongoing basis through a continuous monitoring program. So they follow the same procedure that any other system owner would have. The only difference is they're managing a set of common controls that are provided to the organization instead of an information system. Plans, assessment reports, plans of actions and milestones for common controls or a summary of such information are made available to system owners and can be used by authorizing officials to guide and inform authorization decisions for systems inheriting common controls. So the, 
The systems and the people that are inheriting common controls need to know the basics of the common controls that they're inheriting, such as are they authorized? Do they have any weaknesses that are identified in the plan of action and milestones? Is there any circumstances that the system owner needs to understand when inheriting those common controls? As an organization, sometimes it's hard to determine where to start when identifying which controls out of the control catalog or NIST Special Publication 853 are good candidates for inheritance and which are not. NIST Special Publication 853 Revision 5 has created a table that identifies if the control is to be implemented by the organization or by the system owner. Those controls that are determined to be organizationally implemented are great candidates to be considered for a common control. Those controls that are designated as a system level control obviously are not good candidates for common controls. And when we see something that is identified as both a organization and a system level control, that should be included in a common control plan. That should be included in a common control set by a common control provider, but reinforced or acted on also by the system owner. You see in this table that there's either the letter O or the letter S, which identifies if it's an organization level implementation or a system level implementation. Um, the other thing that you would see is O slash S, which is implemented by both the organization and the system, and those are essentially hybrid controls. Reference for this task is NIST Special Publication 853. In closing, this topic we discussed a lot of information about control inheritance, common control providers, and the documentation and requirements that a common control provider, or a CCP, is required to do to have their controls available for implementation in the organization. This is really one of the most important parts of the RMF. This reduces the number of controls that a system owner is required to implement when fielding a system through the RMF. In this topic, we discussed input and output, responsibility, inheritance, the control families that are likely candidates for becoming common control, common control providers, how we develop common control lists and the listing information, leveling of common controls, uh, what about hybrid and insufficient controls, control and risk assessments, documentation, and of course, references. I know it's a lot to cover, but if any of this doesn't make sense, please go back and watch this video again. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.